I am Blake Cabot. I am the owner of facepaint.com and I am thrilled to have Amanda Careford, who is um, uh, the great teacher. She's got a school in the UK um, called Face Painting Hub, uh, if you guys are into that. And she just shows lots of one strokes and fun things. She's a great teacher and uh, newly admitted to being a teacher, but still a teacher now and uh, does a great job. So we're going to learn all about girl bling designs. So uh, uh, enjoy, sit back and enjoy it. Okay. Amanda, take Thank it you, away. Thank you, Blake. Hello, everybody. My name is Amanda Careford. If you don't know me already, um, you probably see me posting online an awful lot. So I'm really sorry if that irritates you. But um, I do try and help with all of the posts um, rather than just uh, doing show me. Tonight, what we're going to be doing, um, because I've got two passions. One is painting. The other one is bling. Um, I'm going to be showing you some different bling designs. And I'm also then going to be doing a paint at the end of it showing uh, the ruffle butterfly, which is uh, quite an interesting skill to learn. Um, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. So I'm going to start off. I know we're going to probably have some people who have blinged before and some who haven't. So um, anyone who is completely new to bling, um, I would suggest that you go over to one of my groups, either Bling and Things or um, Bling Maniacs, and have a look at the featured pinned item which is uh, a tu tutorial which will take you through the basics of both medical tape and tulip. I'm going to show you both examples here today, um, but I'm not going to go through detail of the basics because I don't want to bore the people that are obviously who have done it before. So um, to start off with, so the four things that I sell the most of are Hello, unicorn California. horns, unicorn horns, princess blings, mermaid tails and butterflies. And I think that's probably most common for people on the job. And this is for me to other face painters, which obviously tells me that they're being used on the well, job South a lot. Florida. Now, what I would like to try and do tonight is to show you what some of the other possibilities are. I'm not going to bore you with a whole stream of the things I do. I'm just going to show you a few examples. So this is just a few of the things that um, I've produced in the past. I try and think Sorry. out of the box with what I'm doing. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I do try and think out of the box. And with with Bling, it's a really great opportunity to upsell on the job, both to kids and also to adults. So when you've got adults event, adult events, it's absolutely brilliant opportunity. And people like Andrea Moye do it all the time. They upsell fancy Blings to adults um, with or without paint. Um, this is an example of Mardi Gras. So any feathers that you've got lying around, look in your kids' craft kits is probably the best thing I can suggest because there'll be all sorts of fancy stuff in there that you'll be able to use. Um, and just play with it. Always try and use focal points when you're doing your bling, but do some different stuff. I'm going to be teaching um, with Andrea at Max next week, things like the horns, unicorns, mermaid tails, etc., mm -hmm. curling your horns. But these are all built on medical tape so you just peel and stick when you're on the job um and they as i said they're a brilliant way to upsell on the job these are a lot of positive comments people oh, say you are the best in the biz <laughs> oh thank you well I, I i spent most of covid just playing with my craft stuff and my daughter's craft stuff and kind of built the business up um by doing that but things like this, they're really lightweight. And all you do is you attach some medical tape to it and you've got a really um, jazzed up Halloween design um, or just for a kid. They're absolutely perfect. You can use these little balloon lights. I know it'd be difficult to see. Oh, that's not worked. Brilliant. OK, let me try another one. So this is a, um, a pirate cutlass that I made, which hopefully you can see that lights up. And these are just little balloon lights that you can get on how uh, much, eBay. How or many Amazon. dollars does this add to your pricing? Um, it varies. So uh, in the UK, there is a limit to how much you can really upsell on the job. So average, I suppose, is four or five pounds for a face paint, which I suppose is seven or eight dollars, no, a bit less than that, six or seven dollars. Um, and when you do adult events, you tend to get more. You can charge maybe up to um, 15 pounds, maybe 18 dollars for bling and face paint. Um, but I know in America, people that do the unicorn horns with a face paint, they can charge anything sort of between 18 and 25 dollars 
for those. So you really can, um, a little bit like the hair braids, you can really make some decent money out of those. Mm -hmm. Plus the other thing that so many people that bling say is it's like therapy, just sitting there making these pretty little sparkly things. I suppose it's almost like going back to your childhood when you used to play with uh, crafty things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so there's so many, I'm not going to go through all of it. There's so many different things you can do with the tulip. So you can theme them, that's a little football owl. These are all just with tulips squeezed out that mm -hmm. I create just playing with different designs, all the way up to mega things that are made out of tulip fabric paint, well, like the masquerade mask. Um, um, what, which, what's the difference between medical tape and sheets of double-sided craft tape? Um, one is safe to use on skin. The other one isn't, simply put. Got it. So okay. medical tape is designed to be used... Um, for medical purposes on skin. Craft tape is basically like sticky tape. So mm. I personally, for insurance purposes and because of kids' skin, I wouldn't use it on kids. Right, gotcha. And what really. kind of medical tape are you using? So the medical tape I use is, it comes in sheets, uh, A4 right. sheets. And there's several people in the USA, Happy Place Bling, Summer Carter, they both um, stock it. Um, and the same in the UK, there's uh, Too Mimi, um, oh goodness, mine's gone black, Glitter Envy and um, My Blingtastic, they all stock these. You can't buy it on Amazon, unfortunately. You can get wig tape or boob tape, but that comes in little strips. Mm. So little strips like that. So you're a bit more limited with the size of blings that you can make. Um, with okay. this, obviously, you can go as big or as small as you like. Hello, Houston. So, right, I'm going to stop talking about what I've made and I'm going to start making something because it's nothing there you worth. Go. There you go. When all people do is talk and they don't actually get down to any making. I believe right. me, I've gotten feedback. They want me to shut up. I promise you. <laughs> Probably want me to shut up as well. No, uh, actually, right, they, so they want to hear you. <laughs> basic tools of the job. Um, I use tweezers. This is a gem picker, so it's got like a wax tip. Not essential because you can use something like um, sticky tack, blue tack, the stuff that you stick posters onto walls with on a toothpick or um, a chopstick, something like that. Little scissors, really, really important tool. If you've got big scissors, they're quite difficult to manoeuvre when you're cutting out blings. So that's that. Right, today what we're going to be making move those off we talked about those um we're going to be making some princess blings so i'm going to show you how to make with tulip hopefully you can see that in the middle there uh with tulip um a frozen princess and um, a normal princess it's quite a quick process so um i'll be bashing through these if you just shout out the questions as we go blake mm -hmm. sure and i'll also do um a butterfly bling um uh, on medical tape and also a princess bling, and then I'll do a paint. Hopefully we'll have time for all of that. So- I don't know what, where you can buy them in the United States. The tape. Buy the what, tape, sorry? The, the tape. The tape. So Summer Carter, who's Nola, Nola Creative, she okay. sells it, and so does Leslie Springall McElroy from Happy Place Bling. So you can buy sheets from them. Okay. So what I do with mine is I, cut it and this is probably the best tip if you don't bling already or even if you do bling and you don't cut your tape it is honestly the best tip I could possibly give you is to cut shapes I started doing this years ago because when you are sticking onto a sheet like this peeling it back bit by bit and then using your scissors to go around each individual one you spend hours doing it hours you could be spending doing something much more fun like painting so I have a little craft guillotine and I cut three centimetre strips, which is about one and a quarter inches. I then just get a pair of large scissors and by eye, I just look to see if that's square, cut it like that and then cut it straight across. So there's no measuring involved whatsoever. And then I use those and I keep bags of these. And if I was doing butterfly bling, I would, this would be about an inch. Um, it depends on how big you want your bling. I would do my butterfly bling about an inch deep, uh, which is um, two and a half centimetres. And then I'll cut the end off like that and the other side off like that. And I'd have a butterfly bling. 
which will look like that. And as you can probably see, or hopefully can see, um, this one's slightly larger because I've cut it off a larger strip. There's no trimming. I'm just uh, going to pause while I say a that. Request for a closer view. A closer view of the back or the front? Well, I <laughs> presume both. I mean, sort of, it's, it, 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 yes, I guess that they want to see it closer. Okay. There we go. So hopefully you can see that. I know I had a problem. I kept zooming in the last time I did a, um, a live with you and it then kept zooming out again, which was really annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so no trimming. So I'm going to leave that there on the table. No trimming. Some of them you do have to trim just the corners off, as you can probably see here. I've literally just had to snip the corners off, but it's okay. seconds. Plus, right. you don't waste tape. If you use it by the sheet, you will waste so much tape, and it is not cheap. So cut your strips, cut your shapes, keep them to hand, and you're always ready to go on the bling. Right. So let me move those off there. Now, what we use for the tulip, I'm going to do that here. Let me get rid of those as well. So tulip fabric paint. So this is a flexible um, 3D fabric paint. Comes in lots of different colours. I know you have lots of it over in America, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get quite so much here, but you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on eBay. You can get it in craft stores, anywhere like that. That's a staple for making these blings. Now I'm going to be using, I'm going to do the frozen bling first. This is a grid, by the way. So this is my Bling Mania grid, which uh, if you go to Bling and, uh, Bling and Things or Bling Maniacs, you'll be able to download that from the files. That's um, free to download. And it just helps with symmetry. You can use it portrait or landscape. I'm going to use it landscape today for these blings. And you just use the shapes here to help you with your symmetry and to guide what you're doing. So when I use tulip, I always use two hands. Sorry. Was no, there a no, question, Blake? No, more a question for some Facebook user. They said, what's the meeting idea? I'm not sure what that is. I'll ask them. Cut the shapes first. Okay. okay. So can, can you see close enough or do I need to go closer? I think going a little closer wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to actually move the whole thing closer because I know zooming in doesn't always oh. help. They want to see, Bella wants to see your Ghost Roses webinar. Hmm. Ghost, yes, no, that's already up, isn't it? I did that um, a little while ago. Yeah. So hopefully that's in the right place. So when I do these, I always use two hands and always plant your elbows because you'll, you will just be steadier. It's like using your little finger when you're face painting. You have not missed um, the ruffle butterfly. Oh, yeah, well, hopefully not. I'll, I'll make sure I talk quick and do this quick so that we get to it. So... When you're squeezing out, I always use two hands just because I find it easier. These are the big um, four fluid ounce um, pots. You do get smaller pots as well. So I always start in the middle. And for this one, I'm just going to be pulling out two arms like that. I always store my tulip upside down as well because it creates less air bubbles, which can be a little bit frustrating when you're doing this. But if you find you have an air bubble that creates a splurge, don't try and wipe it up, you will make a mess. Just leave it, and when the tulip is dry, use your little scissors, and you can just trim off the excess tulip if it's looking a little bit tatty around the edges. So I'm gonna create a top layer. This is gonna be a sparkly one, so this is blueberry sparkles, and this will go all glittery afterwards. Okay. And then because it's frozen, I'm going to use some slick white. I'm going to create a layer just underneath, slightly shorter, just going up the sides. Now, this technique I um, affectionately called the uh, Kipling technique because it relates to um, further dicing on some cakes made by a company called Mr. Kipling in this country. But it's okay. basically when you do further dicing on cakes, that's exactly what it is. So using your toothpick, actually I'm going to use a slightly longer one. Sorry, toothpick's a bit grubby, it gets used a lot. And what you do is you, you basically just pull through. And to get the, the, the drippy effect, you're just pulling the top layer through. So, and you do that before you put the bling in. So you just start at the top and then just wiggle down. 
but each time you need to clean it off on a tissue because otherwise you then start mixing up the colors. So I'm just going to do this just so it looks like little icicles. God, I could find things. And then I'm going to pull out the edges just because it makes it look pretty. So I'm going to start here. I've got uh, these are little, oh. these are applique iron-on crowns. So I don't know if you can see that. They're just really thin. Weight is important. So if you put lots of heavy pieces in, it's going to be falling off that kid's head really quickly. So if you can use things like sequins, little fabric appliques um, to create pretty effects, it will help. Do can everyone niggle? see that okay? I'm not sure entirely the context for this question, but it sounds like a good question. Uh, uh, do you wiggle? Do I wiggle? I do wiggle sometimes, yes. <laughs> so... I what I do with these, I, I do a wiggly effect, um, just as you're sort of like pulling the toothpick. You don't, if you, what I would suggest you do is get some fabric paint and play with it. I wiggle with these just to make it look a little bit more like icicles. I don't always wiggle. If I'm doing something like spiders, I probably wouldn't wiggle or scorpions. Um, Right, so I'm just going to add a few little bits of bling to this. So I think I'm going to put, now I'm going to put this, this is a, a half moon pearl. I'm going to put this in the middle, but I know I don't have enough. Uh, Sarah, no, we're going to be doing bling today. The, generally, these webinars last an hour, um, but we're not going to be doing beautiful butterfly face painting. Nope. Well, I am going to do a butterfly at the end. Okay. I cannot see so, well enough. Okay, I'm sorry, Michelle. I don't know. I, I'm seeing pretty well, honestly. Um, it needs to be more zoomed in. What are you thinking? Let me try. Every time I try and zoom in, it zooms out again. I can try and come a little closer. Okay. There we but go. I don't know if it's going to zoom out. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. I can see it. Um, how icy are you pressing? Pressing? I'm not exactly sure what that means either. Oh, Until how you... hard am I pressing? Yeah, I guess so. Until you so feel when... it touch the very bottom or... So it depends what you want to achieve. If you push your toothpick to the bottom so that you're actually touching the plastic, you don't always manage to pull through a lot of the color at the top. What you can do if you've got a color at the top that you want to make sure reaches the bottom is almost come up and over. So you just touch it in the dark color and then pull up and over the rest and then down. I'm touching the plastic when I get to the end of the tip though. So hopefully that answers that. Hopefully that answers that. Um, I'm going to get a little flower. Mm -hmm. Now the tweezers coming very useful um, when you're doing, when you're picking up little things. So either tweezers or gem picker, both work well. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pop that one in there like that. Mm -hmm. Now you could, if you wanted to, just leave that like that. You don't actually need anything else on it. I'm going to add a couple of little half round pearls just for fun. And the thing with uh, bling is exactly the same principle as face painting, where you use ascending and descending sizes to create flow. And that's how you get your bling to look pretty. If I put three pearls exactly the same size going out towards the edge, um, it just wouldn't look as pretty. It wouldn't have that same flow. So I'm using two the same size and then a smaller one. And where I pulled the point out, that again, it gives a pretty finish to it. And if you imagine that with, you know, a one stroke princess uh, stroke coming up here, that would look absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Now you can, if you want to. Um, Do you I charge use lots... more at parties when you use bling? Um, well, when I, um, when... When I do parties, I decided that I was going to add on money to my party price regardless and just charge that to everybody just to keep it simple. So sure. whether they have bling or not, they get one price. But I've priced for the bling to make sure that I'm making enough profit um, mm -hmm. for face painting and bling. Some people have different packages where they'll do like um, a, a gold and a silver package. So silver is for face painting, 
gold is face painting with glitter and bling and they have two different prices so it depends very much on you know where you're getting your business from if you're doing lots of paper face obviously you can do it as an add-on if you're doing lots of parties it's entirely up to you some people will just do a special piece for the birthday child so that then creates that sort of like FOMO from the other kids and then you know you give the cards out and say well if you want the bling then go and get your parents but if your party <laughs> and you know it's a, another way to upsell mm -hmm. um, and you know a point of difference for your business as well sure so uh the thing i was just about to show um these are this is nail art i use loads of nail art they're little tiny um teardrops these are um, but they're really good if you want to add some extra little features, um, like little drips coming down. So they they can be a little bit fiddly, and that's where I would use. In fact, let me show you. I would use the toothpick with the uh, blue tack on the end because you can roll that into a really tiny point, unlike your gem picker. Because if you pick one of these up with a gem picker it's quite difficult to see where you're putting it because of the size mm -hmm. of the gem picker. With this, she says, and what you is get that? stuck. Just a piece of you can, clay? Um, it's a sticky tack, blue tack. So it's the stuff when you want to put posters or pictures on your wall without it pulling the paint off. Oh, right. It's that stuff. Okay. We call it blue tack in the UK or white tack, pink tack, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Not I sure. have no idea what to call it in the United States. If anybody knows, say it. There we go. But yeah, I, I know you do have it. Um, Andrea says that she uses it um, a lot for her blinging as well. But yeah, so it is quite sticky. So you have to touch the small light, small pieces very lightly. But it's a really easy way to, to pick them up um, and put them in. Right. Where are we for time? Excellent. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to show uh, you. You've got 37 oh. minutes. We call okay. it blue tack. There we go. Oh, you do call it blue tack. Okay, I thought you called it sticky tack. Or oh, museum well. putty. Museum putty. Okay. One. Right, so moving on to uh, standard pr princess bling, and I'll show you how to do the, the drips and the loops. Again, so using the glitter gold, and with this I do it slightly differently. I do start in the middle, but I start with a much bigger blob, and then I'll just as before, pull out two arms, and then I'll pull out a tail as well. So I always start with that shape. And I'm going to use a, this is called a teardrop. And when you put them on, try and push down in the center because that will make sure that- You are now known as the live. queen of bling. <laughs> Available you. on Amazon. Are you using <laughs> fabric paint? I am. It's tulip fabric paint. You can use other fabric paint. Mm -hmm. uh, some people I know use glitter glue. Some people use hot glue, but they they don't dry as flexible. So um, they, if you're making bigger pieces, then you can end up with the gems popping out of them or um, it just won't mold to the shape of um, where you're actually putting it on the skin. Because obviously foreheads are curved generally. Um, but yeah, so tulip fabric paint plus the glittery ones. So this is glitter gold. Uh, they dry really sparkly. So hopefully you can see that in the light. Um, and they just they they have their own pretty effect. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to do a just a little rose in the center. And you can build these up so you can do as much or as little as you want to really. So that's um, that's a 12 millimeter rose, and this is called a horse eye mm -hmm. uh, because of the shape of it. So that's one like this. And in South Africa, that. they call it pre stick. Pre stick. That's actually kind of a better name. So these are just going in again. Oops. So that does happen. If that happens, try and fix it. I'm just going to wipe off the back of that gem. See, I like, I like it when things like that happen when you're on a live because then you can show how to fix it. And I would just put an, another little bit of tulip down there. If it had splodged badly, I would have done exactly the same thing. And if it was spread out here, I just would trim that off afterwards, as I said um, in the beginning. Just trim it off once it's dry. 
And when you push these down, what you have to make sure of is that there is an ooze. Always embrace the ooze. You want lots of tulip. I'm going to try and lift that up to show you. You want lots of tulip oozing around the edges mm -hmm. of that bling because it shrinks back massively, tulip does. And if you don't use lots of it, you can always trim off if you don't like it. But if you don't use lots of it, you'll regret it because the gems will pop out. Also, try not to push them all the way down to the base of the plastic. They have to have some of the tulip underneath them to stay held inside the tulip when it's dry. If you push it all the way down, then you've basically got a gap at the back. And again, when you when you actually peel it up, um, it might not all come up. Uh, what else are we doing here? So we're doing that. So now I'm just going to add some extra little bits. And you can go to town. You can go as mad as you like. Adding in whatever you feel like adding in. So I'm going to put a little pink one in the top there. That was another horse eye, as are these pearly ones. I love these pearly ones for Princess Bloom. Wow. So with these, if you uh, want to do... Carla, she just does this to relax, actually. And she doesn't charge yeah. extra for her blinks. It just has a jar tip. So, uh, for a tip jar, sorry. Yeah, they, they do it just because they enjoy doing it. So I'm now going to show you just if you want to do loops. Again, you do have to be a little bit careful. And again, plant your elbows before you do it so that you're nice and steady. And use the grid to help you with the symmetry. Mm -hmm. If it's not perfect, it obviously doesn't matter. But I am a bit of a perfectionist, so there you go. what can I say? Well, you can just say you're and a bit you of can a bring down. I'll try and do that with my left hand. Mm -hmm. Not quite as steady. And, and again, you don't actually have to put gems in there. You can just leave that. I just realized I've not got my other mm -hmm. little um, gems available. What have I done with those? I think my iPad is on top of them. But never mind. Let me see if I can find a couple of. I'm trying not to knock everything. So these again are nail art. Little tiny horse size. These are only uh, about four millimeter. Huh? And you can just pop those in the end. I was going to put rounds in there, but I can't actually get to my rounds because my iPad is on top of half of my stock. So that's those. And then you can put another couple of smaller ones. Uh, does fabric, DM fabric paint works the same? Um, I don't know. The only other brand that I've tried is, uh, I think it's Moon Glow, it's called. And it dries really, really hard. <laughs> so I always go back to tulip fabric paint, I'm afraid. And how do you get them to stick to the skin? So there's two ways to do it. You can either put some medical tape on it afterwards. So um, like this one, what I would do. So that's one that was tulip. And I'll, I'll flip one of these up just to show you how it operates when you flip it up. So one of the triangles I cut earlier, you just no take worries, one Kim. side off. We're still going on. And there are there are two sides to the um the medical right. tape there is a dull side and a shiny side i don't know if you can see that in the light that's the shiny side and that's the dull side when you display your bling if you want to stick it to anything the only side that will stick to anything is if you've still got the dull side on your bling so always try and peel the shiny side off and build on that side so you've then got the dull side that you can you can use sticky tack, you can use glue dots, you can use anything to stick to your display. Mm. So that was it basically. So I've put that on, and as I said before, there's absolutely minimal trimming um, if you cut the shapes. And you will find right. that when you're making bling, you will make similar shaped blings, similar mm. size blings, and you can then whatever yours look like, you can then cut the shapes to fit that. Got it. 
And um, does, and that does, is just does it come bad. off when people, let's say, scowl? Why would they scowl when they have bling on their face? I ask. I don't know. Um, so it's more likely to come off if you try and put it on top of paint. So always try and make sure there's absolutely minimal paint underneath it and definitely not wet paint because it will just fall straight off. That's a, pretty much a guarantee. Okay. So you heard that here. That's a guarantee. But when <laughs> when they when they scowl, so I try and avoid putting blings in places. If if you look in the mirror and look at what happens when you laugh or frown, etc., look at where the creases are. Kids obviously have less of them. Um, I wouldn't put it um, sort of like just underneath the eyes because as soon as you smile, that bit of skin will move a lot. Right. So think about that. But the center of the forehead, kids, the worst thing that happens is that kids pull them off. So what I always say when I put them on is that they are wishing gems. And when they fall off, give them to your grown up and make a wish. <laughs> just so they don't come back and want me to stick it on again. There you go. So I'm now going to do um, this is a, a little a great tip. Uh, if there was a bouncy castle involved, do not bother with blings. I think that's no, nope. that's, that's, that's 100% agree. Yeah, yeah, sweat. People will always sweat it off. Some people use um, Prosade or Marinade gem. Uh, so like a, um, a skin safe adhesive to stick them on with. Mm -hmm. So you could just put that straight on the back of here when you're using the tulip ones, if you're not using medical tape. Um, they are a contact adhesive, so if you put it on the skin first and on the bling, let it go clear, and then mm -hmm. stick it on, it will stick like a rock. The only problem then is getting it off the skin. So you need alcohol wipes or something like that. So I personally don't like putting it, um, putting Prosade or anything like a contact adhesive Actually, directly on the skin. Carla uh, uses Prosade to glue it. Um, so so uh, Carly uses Prosade to glue it. So I yeah, guess Prosade so works too. What you can do is you can Prosade the back of this, Mm -hmm. Leave it to go clear for um, five, 10 minutes. Do this the day before your job and then stick them onto a plastic sheet and then they're ready to stick and go when you're on the job. And it okay. will stay sticky for years. I've got blings that are like five years old that are still stuck to plastic. Pull them off and they're still sticky. Prosade doesn't dry. Another so. tip uh, from somebody, from Carla, is um, I use Vaseline in the plastic before I put the fabric paint. It's easier for me to remove it from the plastic. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine it is. I know some people use um, liquid Band-Aid as well. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. So Vaseline, if you were then sticking it onto medical tape, it might not stick to medical tape. So if you're using Prosade, I'm sure it'd be fine. But I don't know. I'd have to experiment with that. Not okay. tried that. Okay, just tip to pass along. Thank but you these, much. so these are ones that I made yesterday. So I'm just going to peel these up just because one of the most commonly asked questions is how long do you leave them what happens when you peel them up what if they're still wet underneath etc etc so i made these yesterday and you literally just flick it up now that one because it didn't have lots of gems in that one's dried mm -hmm. so that would be good to go this one because it's got lots more gems in i think is going to still be wet underneath so i'm just going to flick up the edges those aren't actually stuck in And that's still got a wet spot in the middle. So I would just turn that over and leave it to dry. Now, I'd normally leave my blings, my tulip blings, two days um, and then flip them over. What you can do, another top tip, is you can put the whole sheet, once you've got a skin on it, after about eight to ten hours, you can put it in the freezer. And what, okay. what that does is it doesn't dry it, but it freezes the moisture in the tulip. So you can leave them about an hour, bring them out, and then flip them over to dry because it's the underside that will still be wet. Um, and that way you can get them done in about 24 hours. So top tip. If you're going to be making the tulip creatures with spiders, things like that, little legs, don't put them in the freezer because the little little flicky bits that you get like this, if as soon as you try and flip them when they're frozen, they will snap. So don't do that. Right, okay. moving on. Where are we? We're five past. So I'm going to show you one of the butterfly blings. And I'll just put the, there we go. So it's showing you how to do it on medical tape. So I'm peeling off the shiny side. The biggest problem when you've got these little shapes is that they're really sticky. So the first thing you have to do 
is stick a gem on it. So I always go face first, and this is going to be um, a little butterfly center. A couple of little arms. I call them arms, they're not arms, they're just um, horse eyes. These are called uh, peacock horse eyes. And this is just how I do my butterfly blings. And they can be really, really quick, as you can see. And that's the head. Another common question is, what are these things, the little antenna? They are flower stamens. They're the things that people use for silk flowers to put in the centers, so in the centers. And when I do these, some of them are a bit more floppy than others. I just wrap them round. Now these ones are quite floppy and long. You can cut them if you want to. Ooh. Um, what I tend to do is I will stick it down there and I'll then swap over like so. It just shortens it a little bit. But I want to make sure that that's underneath there, underneath the head. So you can see there, hopefully, um, so that they, they can't be pulled out. If you cut them, they can obviously be pulled out if you don't put enough tulip in the centre. And the centre of it, I will use glitter diamond, which dries almost clear, but just a little bit sparkly. And I do this with all my princess blings. So even ones like this, I will build the outside edge and I will then leave the centre and whatever I put in the centre, I'll put a nice healthy blob of tulip and I'll hold that up so hopefully you can see how much because it really does shrink back. So there's a lot of tulip in there and that serves two purposes. One, it makes sure that all of these outside edge pieces, they are going to be staying stuck on. And secondly, it holds in the centrepiece. And again, don't worry about the use. It will shrink back. A really nice way to finish these off. Um, uh, uh, someone said that they made them on baking paper on in the evening, and they yeah, you the can next make morning. them. You can make them. Well, baking paper in the UK is a little bit different to the wax paper in in the USA. So wax paper um, is a little bit thicker. Baking paper does tend to wrinkle, so the underside um, will get wrinkly um, when you because it because it's wet basically so when you build these on uh, the uk baking paper it will go a little bit wrinkly underneath but you know um if you don't mind that that's fine um silicon baking mats are another good thing to do it on the only trouble with those things is that you can't then use a grid so the good the great thing about using these um plastic pockets and always make sure you use a textured one the um smooth ones i think they're called glass like um, it will stick to it and it can actually fuse to it. So always make sure that these are textured. And the joy of these is that you can put anything behind it. Um, so if, for example, you're doing, so these are some of the uh, creatures that I do. So you've got bats and dragons and things like that. Obviously, you can't use a baking sheet for those unless you've learned how to do them freehand. Right. But yeah, absolutely. Use use what you've got. And even the paper. So the wax and paper. Samantha, from... Samantha uses baking paper in New Zealand. And the only downside is that I can't reuse because it wrinkles after one application. Yeah, exactly. So what you can also use. So the shiny side of the medical tape, um, you can use that. So if you don't cut it into strips and you actually peel um, one side off, this is really good um, as well for building one. So all I'm going to do now, I just want to finish this off Although... um, around the edges. Okay. And please. these are um, these are called um, what are these called? These are called vine sequins. And as I said before, sequins are a really really good lightweight, fancy way to make things look finished. They're super cheap as well. Mm -hmm. um, I get these from AliExpress, and I'm just using the tweezers to put those in because it's a lot easier than my fingers. And then I'll just straighten them up if I can. Uh, somebody else mentioned on the, in terms of the baking paper, they put it on a sticky cutting mat so it doesn't wrinkle. So there you go. Oh, all sorts of funky ways of doing it. That's what we right, do here so... at facepaint.com. Funky. Yeah, you absolutely do. We're right, known so... for our funkiness, our funkosity. Your funkosity, is that a new word? I yes. like that. Yep. 
So there we've got a really simple butterfly bling. Um, and without me talking, that would have taken literally less than a minute to make. So it does not have to be complicated. I think that's the most important thing. You can use, um, so this for example, is just a little paper flower called um, a mulberry paper flower. And all I've done is I've used a little bit of glue just to stick in an organza butterfly. And this is the sort of thing that I'd use for adults just to add to a little eye design, something like that. A little bit of tape on the back and a little sequin. And that's and it. It can, it can literally be that simple. What happens if you putting a gem on the tape? Can you remove it? Um, you, uh, it's a really good question, actually. Yes and no. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me show you. So... The ones that are that have these like glass backs. So when they've got glass backs like this, when you put that onto medical tape and you've put it in the wrong place and you want to peel it off, what you get is that. So it actually takes the backing off of the gem. So that is a bit of a pain. Now, you don't have to waste the tape. The gem can look a little bit, just not as shiny from the front side. But if you take your gem picker, which has got a metal edge, and you just kind of score it like that, that takes most of it off to the point where you can actually stick another gem on there. So at least you don't waste the tape, even if you wasted the gem. And that so, mat that you're using, where do they buy that? The this mat, so the yeah. the actual grid um, is available free to download in the files of Bling and Things or Bling Maniacs, which are my two Bling groups. Okay, so, so just go to your um, Facebook group. Got it. Yeah, they're they're just free to download, um, and you just need to buy these are um, page pockets, so the things that you um, put in files that have like holes along the edge. So that's those. So that is that. Um, we've got just over 15 minutes left. So I know. I'm just going to show about? you. Sorry? What are we going to talk, talk about? Well, we're going to talk about uh, paint. I'm going to do a little bit of painting. I'm going to have to bring this back up again, I'm afraid, because okay. otherwise okay. my paintbrush will be hitting yeah. the camera. Let me move those out of the way. And we at facepaint.com do not recommend that. No. Right, let me pop those out of there. Now, I won't go into huge amounts of detail about the um, the ruffling, and this is such a fab technique, and it's a really good way of helping you to get control of your brush while twisting it if you just practice this technique. But you do have to be careful what paints you use for it mm -hmm. with your one strokes. You need one strokes that have got a significant contrast from the dark edge to the next color. So these, I don't know if you can see those all on there, you can see most of them. So for example, this one here, you haven't got a massive contrast, so you don't get a very good effect with a ruffle. Okay. With the black to green, you do get a nice effect. So it's just a, a word of caution. What I would do is I would practice with your one strokes to see which ones work the best when you do it mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is grab my paint everything over and just in the interest of speed i've pre-sponged my board because we all know that takes about 20 minutes to dry when you do that mm -hmm. so that i can go straight into the ruffling and I just need to grab my water, so bear with me a second. Are we still in the middle of the screen there? We are. Good. Right. Having to move from bling to paint is quite a, a, a drama, because I don't have a huge amount of space. <laughs> Do any okay. of us. So uh, the Sally Ann Lynch palette is actually really good for this because um, with, with this particular palette, you've got white next to a dark on every single color combination. 
So I use it, I don't use it as the rainbow section grading. Um, I use it the other way, which I will show you. Um, and I'm going to be using a 5 8 Verona face painting hub brush, which newly released two weeks ago. That Blake has in, stock, in his store. Sorry, shame on plug, can't help yourself. Gosh darn it. And you, we're going <laughs> to yeah. have a webinar of Amanda showing off her brushes in just a mere three weeks. We are. We are. So Although No one else knows that besides her or not right now. Certainly no, that's true. We just organized it. Yep. So I'm going to use the um, the purple edge. And so you've got the purple next to the white here. It's a little bit obscured because I was just playing with it earlier. And I've pre, so what I've done, the, the color that I've pre sponged is going to blend with these colors mm -hmm. so that I know that um, it's going to work. And when you do your ruffling, it's a really good idea to just get yourself a practice sheet. And I would not use a practice board. I would actually use, I often use a tan card. So the practice strokes that I showed you there, that's um, 200 gram tan card. So you get a really nice color contrast, but it dries a lot quicker than a board and it isn't as slippery. So you can maintain control better. So I 100% would invest in some of that uh, or just cardboard the free sponge base um that is mermaid by uh no it's not it's snowflake by tag by tag it's Got that it. one. okay now i hope that you're going to be able to see i'll try and move in a little bit so there's there's two ways of doing this so I'm just going to just need to make sure the end of my brush isn't going to hit the camera. That don't isn't going to work very well. Don't want that. Not even a little bit. So I'm just going to pull in the two edges. And when you do this, the action that you're doing, I don't know if it's going to be probably easier if I show you on here. So you're as you come, you do the first stroke down and round, just like you're going to do a normal butterfly edge. And then you are flipping the top edge. So you're pivoting between your fingers like this. So you're pivoting across and then pivoting back again. So that is the action that you have got to practice. And I'm just doing it really roughly here just to show you. Now you can push which is where you just slide the brush up. Mm -hmm. So you're not pivoting at all. But then you get quite uh, parallel ruffles by doing that. Pivoting will give you that extra movement so that you are then able to use the lines um, oh, for the veins. Can you move a little bit more to the center, please? Oh, more to the center, sorry. Let me just load up again. Okay. Uh, that's still off to the left uh, a little bit. There we go. That's about right. Yeah. Is that yeah. good? That's good. So you're pivoting like this in between your fingers, but you're pivoting just the top edge of the brush. I hope they can see that. Uh, they'll see the end of it. Uh, actually, they saw it. Yeah? Yeah. You sure? It, it's 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 kind of they're on delay so after 60 seconds of this they'll they'll they, they, they'll see it okay yeah. right so now i'll go in and do the butterfly this reminds uh the Dianetta ice cream okay yes it is it's, it's like that rippled ice cream that you get on the corner so is that is that in the center for everyone hopefully it is yeah, it is um, I can't do it as close, unfortunately, because the end of the brush will be hitting the camera. Yeah. Um, so. Well, we'll zoom it in when we do the class on brushes. 
So what you have to be careful of is obviously the eyebrow. So I would then just come down and round mm -hmm. and in. Now the other side is a little bit trickier. This is a lot. It's a lot easier if you go uh, put it up on um, like a, an angled like easel, like a desktop easel or something, because that's a lot more natural compared to how you would be painting a face, which is um, vertical rather than on a flat surface. So you're just pivoting the brush. Mm -hmm. as you go down and then down around the eye and it's the same for the bottom mm -hmm. this method might be good for Chris ribbon Christmas candies I agree yeah exact, exactly that you can it doesn't have to be for butterfly edges it can be for anything you like why in the middle there yeah uh, no Both. a little bit to the right not better. Perfect. Again, I'm just going to do this in one go. Coming up, and then on the other side. This one is tricky just because of the angle I'm trying to do it and not hit the camera. Mm -hmm. So that essentially is the basic structure of it. Hopefully uh -huh. you can see the ruffles in there. I'm just going to get a sponge. So the sponge that I use to do the base, I would um, just use that to blend in those edges. Uh -huh. I'll do that. So I'll just blend on, blend in the inside edge of those. Uh, what size brush were you using? Um, that was a five eighths. Got it. Okay. That's my favorite butterfly edging brush. And then I'm going to use a, this is a Rosemary & Co. So the same people that make our face painting cup brushes, Rosemary & Co. This is a number two series 366, which is a really nice pointy brush. I'm just going to go into the purple. So even though it's not the same purple, it's a similar purple. And I'm just going to use that to create the veins. Just coming into the center from the top edge, so the top edge of the ruffle. Same on the other side. And then you can also use this to go in and out and I would go thin thick thin so and that can just help to define the ruffle such a fun fair sorry fair that was off the screen again as well. well said Matushu sorry it's not very stable because I'm holding it up now just so that you can hopefully see but it just helps to define that edge and you can use a is round this, to do is this. this world art day is it yeah. I don't know. I should know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look it up. I I'm should just be in the middle it should every day be World Art Day. It should actually. There should be a little bit of art every day. There we go. Yep. Today's the day. Wow. The I'm irony, of course, is when your taxes are due. So there's that. So just bring those in. I believe so, yes, Bella. The Either side. are available on facepaint.com. And you don't need to do any more than that. Um, you can if you want to. Mm -hmm. You could stick your bling in the middle like that. Mm -hmm. What you could also do, which is quite a nice effect, if I can find my white, white paint. What I did on uh, the one that I posted 
I did some just little extra lines and we've got a couple of minutes left. So I will uh, show it's you a five eighths, uh, hub staff, hub staff, jeez. <laughs> Face paint hub brush. Yeah. And Blake's stocking those. So, um, you've got the full range. There's a half inch, a five eighths, a three quarter in the shorter ones. And there's also the extra long, which are amazing for, um, ribbons and princesses and long flowy rainbows so i'm just mixing up a little bit oh, of... we're sold out of a lot of them but the five eights oh, we still you? have a few left <laughs> yeah we sold out pretty quick wow yeah no okay. we we so we've had to actually um, just reorder. Della ordered all five so there you go so that's oh, amazing yeah, you could ask oh, i'd Della. love to see what you, you do Della. with them so here, so one of the things that um, you can do, if you find that your butterfly is too, um, the wings are too far apart, this is a really good way to, um, and it, often people say, oh, I don't know what to do with antenna. You don't have to do antenna. You can just do some little floaty lines um, if you want to. So I'm just going to go, just do some thin, thick things, just sort of coming up like that. Drag and drops. I call those drag and drop kicks just because you drag, you drop, and then you kick out. I don't know if that'll become a thing or not. Yeah. But uh, that's just what to let I you like know, to we got about them. three minutes. Yeah, I don't need three minutes, Blake. Don't you worry. I'm not worried. Do I uh, look worried? No. And then just crossing over. And this is um, something I see. Um, is it Margie Stanley do? She does lots of work crossing over her lines. And it's just a really pretty effect. One thing you do have to be careful of when you're crossing over your lines is that you don't cross a thick line with a thick line because then it looks like a really fat blob and is not very pretty. Uh, Deborah loves this butterfly. Oh, thank you. Uh, what brush is best for drag and drop, please? 100% um, the Rosemary Co. 366. So I don't know. I did. Um, I talked to Amanda about um, some of these brushes, Blake. So I don't know if yeah, she I think we got them in. Got them. You did. Well, we're yeah, certainly so... getting them. I know if we I don't... do, we have them. <laughs> uh, not yet. I know they're on their way. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's got a really, it's got a really nice point on it. Mm -hmm. um, but it holds lots of paint. This is a number two. Um, I use the number six a lot. Absolutely amazing for tigers. Mm -hmm. And here I'm just coming out and coming in. I'm not tracing the out the actual edge. But it yeah. just sort of gives it a little bit of movement. There's a little bit of fun. You can sort of create a highlight on the top edge if you want to. And how long would this take you at an event? It's a common question. Uh, to do this, um, well, I would hope it wouldn't take me more than five minutes. Okay. Because once you have got the technique, it's it looks impressive, but you're literally, you're just doing the outside edge. You can do more in the center if you want to. Mm -hmm. So this is one I was just playing with earlier, just putting some more one straight lines in the middle. So it's actually, it's no different to your average one stroke butterfly in terms of time. Right. All it is, is making sure you practice that technique. And once you've got that twisting, once you can maintain control whilst twisting the brush, you will be able to do so many more things like your, your roses. People always say that roses are their ne nemesis and so many other flowers just by twisting like that and maintaining control. So highly recommend that. But that's me with a little bit of bling done, I do believe. Okay, well done. So thank you very much, everybody who has watched. I really appreciate your support. Well, I thank you for doing it as well. Let so we get to down. actually meet in real life, hum as a real life human being next week at, at the Max Convention in St. Louis. Yes, that's very exciting. Flying all the way to America, all and by myself. <laughs> um okay so thank you very much every uh thank you very much everybody um we have a webinar coming up next uh this thursday we're going to have linnea um do it showing off her new palette and then uh, uh then next week uh we're off because of uh the event at max and the following week i'm gonna have 
Irene do, showing cartoon designs. So, oh, amazing. Love Irene. Yeah. And then we'll have Amanda back showing off her brushes. So, okay, everybody, have a great day, great evening. And um, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much, Amanda. Bye-bye.